there are limitations on what professional support or therapy that Jehovah's Witnesses um, can employ under their teachings, aren't they? Yes. Um, for example, um, there would certainly be restrictions on a survivor, cautions or restrictions on a survivor from participating in group therapy. And that, that part I don't know about. The only part I've ever heard is that um, they would recommend to choose someone who was respectful of their religious beliefs. Okay, well, it's worth um, taking a quick look at that. <clears throat> Page 55, paragraph 25. While participating in group therapy by a professional therapist is a matter for personal decision, there could be a revealing of confidential facts about other members of the Christian congregation during such sessions. The Christian does not exercise discretion. So you'll see there that participation in group therapy is, is certainly um, frowned upon and there are restrictions with regard to it. Um, I, my, I saw it as it's frowned upon to talk about other people in group therapy, but... That's my reading of it. Well, it's hard to conceive of group therapy when one doesn't talk about what happened to one as a survivor. You right. accept that. <coughs> and if it was one's father or one's uncle or one's teacher or one's uh -huh. elder or one's ministerial servant, one wouldn't be able to get the benefit of the group therapy without saying it was who it was who abused me. Right. 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 So there would be a very substantial restriction, according to this, on a witness's ability to participate in group therapy. Yeah, I just, well, it says it's a matter for personal decision and to use discretion, but um, I could certainly see your point. So if someone is uh, in the congregation is found to have committed uh, sexual abuse, and the Judicial Committee finds them sufficiently repentant, then they remain in the congregation, is that right? Yes. And the repentance, of course, would come with an acceptance that they had done what they were accused of having done. Yes. yes. And if the repentant wrongdoer was a, a wrongdoer in relation to one of his or her own children, they would go back into the family. As far as, as I understand, yes. And, unless there was a report to the authorities. Well, normally the, the yes. You accept, and I think you've written or, or spoken on the subject, you, you accept that uh, a child abuser, child sexual abuser, is uh, unlikely to be able to stop abusing. In other words, once a child abuser, there's likely to be reoffending, not so. It's a very complicated question, but... As once somebody abuses, once their once their internal mechanisms of control have allowed them to cross that line once, I don't have confidence in those internal mechanisms of control for the future. And so really positive steps need to be taken to um, ensure that such a person doesn't have access or opportunity. Yes. Would that be right? And that ability to take effective... Um, child safe action, uh, given what we've just been through, it doesn't exist in the Jehovah's Witnesses' current procedures, does it? Um, well, yeah, I don't think it's just the current procedures. I don't think that they have the authority to remove a child from a home. Well, that certainly. But they, if the law would require them to report then they say they would report, not so. The, yes. But in the absence of such a requirement, then they're not likely to report, or certainly not required by their documents to report to child protection authorities. 
their, their documents say if there's a law that we are mandated to report, we report. And that's, I find that true for most religious organizations, that in the absence of a mandated reporter requirement, um, that they often don't report abuse. Doctor, um, just to finish the discussion you and I had previously, if a, um, a woman brings an allegation that she's been sexually assaulted by a member of the Jehovah's Witness, and she does so because of her strong adherence to the tenets of the church, and believes that she has to report, but she doesn't want to go to the authorities. She doesn't want to be involved in a criminal trial. And there's no other witness, and the alleged abuser doesn't confess. But those listening to her story don't have any doubt that she's telling the truth. But they can't take any action because there's only her evidence. What happens then within the church? I assume, well, you tell me, does the abuser then stay with all of his rights um, intact and the woman would be required to, if she wished to remain part of the Jehovah's Witnesses, to um, interact with him in that environment? Is that what happens? In addition to some other warnings or things of that nature, I would think that that would be what would happen. It's not a very good place to end up, is it? It isn't.